Hi friends, it's Sienna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm here today to <clears throat> break open humility of heart. It is by Father Cacheton Mary de Bergamo. <laughs> I can never get his name right, but it is a classic book. It is by Tan Books, of which I'm an affiliate, but I'm a really bad affiliate. I'm always forgetting to include the link, but if you purchase through my link, I get a little bit of promotional money. Is that why I'm doing it? No, you can see it's the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I'm filming this in June, so Sacred Heart of Jesus. It should make sense. Um, it is a little pocket-sized book. You can see Sorry, Jesus. Um, it's the size of my hand. It's pretty small, so you can take it in with you. So it could be a really great thing to take into adoration this summer. And it's quoting, okay, it's not Matthew 19, our upcoming Lexio Divina, but it's quoting Matthew 11 and Matthew 18 right on it. And I think we read, you may not be caught up with me yet. Um, when we were reading Matthew 19, we went back to Matthew 18 and discussed humility. So this is going to fold very nicely into our Lexio Divina series on Matthew 19. I just grabbed it off the shelf, honestly, um, because I've been meaning to do this. I knew this book existed on the bookshelf and I just really wanted to do it for June. I did a tiny overview of it before, but I really want to get into it. Let's see here. Um, there's just Bible quotes like all over the front and back cover. Even when you open it, there's one from Tobias. Never suffer pride to reign in thy mind or in thy words, for from it all perdition took its beginning. Ouch. Just saying. Wow. Sorry, knowing what, what June is called now, like that just, that whole line just takes in a little bit more meaning. So this was written by uh, Father Kachistan. I think that's how people pronounce it. In 1660 through, he lived from 1660 to 1753. He was a Capuchin friar. It is translated from the Italian by Herbert Cardinal Vaughn. And he lived from 1832 to 1903. And again, another quote, this time from Ecclesiasticus. God hath overturned the thrones of proud princes and hath set up the meek in their stead. God hath made the roots of proud nations to wither, and hath planted the humble of these nations. God hath abolished the memory of the proud, and hath preserved the memory of them that are humble in mind. This was first published around 1905. Tan Books started publishing it in 1978 by photographic reproduction from a 1944 reprint edition of the Newman Bookshop, Westminster, Maryland. What? Um... Retype set with minor copy editing and republished by Tan Books in 2006. The text of this book has numbered sections from unnumbered one at the beginning of chapter one through number 153, the last section of the book. Some section numbers are missing. These are also missing from the text reprinted by Newman Bookshop in 1944, from which they reset the edition. It could represent typographical errors in the original English edition from about 1905 which interior evidence would indicate Newman Bookshop reproduced photographically, or it could be sections of original Italian purposely omitted by Cardinal Vaughn in his translation, or even by whoever had his translation originally typeset and published after his death. A search has been initiated by Tan Books for this complete Italian edition to solve the question. I guess the mystery has not been solved yet. And this was in 2011. That mystery had not yet been solved as to the missing numbers. Interesting. <clears throat> okay and then it says this is interesting because Westminster Maryland is not an archdiocese so it must be talking about something different here in the inside to the priest ordained by me for the diocese of Salford in the archdiocese of Westminster <clears throat> and for the foreign missions also to the ladies of charity established by me in Salford and Westminster in conviction that their works of charity, if planted in the garden of humility, will bear a fuller and richer harvest than if sown in any other soil. And that was written by Herbert Cardinal Vaughn, Archbishop of Westminster, April 23rd, 1903. And I love that because he says their works of charity, if planted in the garden of humility, will bear a fuller and richer harvest than if sown in any other soil. And we know that St. Clair, ah, she's over here, um, St. Clair was called the little plant of St. Francis. 
And her great work of charity was adoration. You can see her here with the Eucharist. Then there is a publisher's preface. Humility of Heart is one of the few books on the virtue of humility, and it is probably the best. As the author points out in several places, humility is typical of all saints. It is the underlying virtue of all virtues, and as the author shows, the easiest way to acquire all other virtues is to concentrate first on acquiring humility. What exactly is humility? It is definitely not a groveling self-depreciation or even a low self-esteem. Rather, it is an accurate view of oneself and where one stands in relation to all others, but especially where one stands in relationship to God <clears throat> and how difficult it is for a person consistently to perform supernaturally good acts purely from a motive of the love of God. Mm, mm. This is humility, as the author points out, is diametrically opposed to the capital sin of pride and wars against that powerful inclination within the fallen man. I'm not going to read the entire um, introduction, but you can see why it's so, so important. Um, humility, especially in this month, which is ironic because it was the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and of humility long before it was Pride Month. Did they pick this month for this particular reason? I don't honestly know. It's just really... You know, to think I, I wanted this book because of the humility of heart, because it was June when I was filming it. And seriously, that study on Matthew that we just did, I just, I just filmed, speaks to this book so heavily. It's going to dovetail nicely in with our study of Matthew 19. Uh, just what, what I was revealed to me anyway. I'm just so entrenched. I do love that it is numbered so that if you're doing it as a study with someone else, you can refer back to it. There is an original preface as well as the publisher's preface from 2006. Um, and there's an introduction as well, which introduces you to um, Father Kachistan or Padre Gaetano Mario de Bergamo. He's one of the great Italian missionaries of the 18th century. Okay, born in 1672, he was professed a minor capuchin in 1692, and he died in 1753. His eulogy contained in the works on illustri illustrious writers of the order of minor capuchins it was brief and pregnant. Um, it's, it's in Latin, so I'll read the English translation here. Second to none in the customs of religious life, first in writing with ease on the things of every kind. Interesting. He was one of the reformers of the Italian pulpit, substituting for the vapid, empty rhetoric, which then prevailed, a solid, learned, and instructive style animated by zeal and real devotion. His religious works, written amid missions and courses of sermons, are contained in 30 volumes of his writings. Benedict Fourteenth says that they have this rare quality in our day, that they satisfy the intellect and the heart. Their solid doctrine in no way dries up their tender devotion and their devotional sweetness in no way detracts from the perfect solidity of their doctrine. What a great man for us to study. You know, so often we can fall into the book learning, right? The head and the heart need to be connected. And it sounds like he was able to do that perfectly. What a blessing this humble friar was. So... I don't know if you could hear that. Rusty was behind me over here panting. I look over at him and he's pretending to be asleep. <laughs> he's very excited. It's the first day of summer. The kids just got off the school bus early and everything. But he's so excited. Um, If you watch any of the videos that I've filmed today, wearing this gray shirt will be your clue. Everyone's just so excited in the neighborhood. It's kind of funny. So this book has six chapters thoughts and sentiments on humility practical examine on the virtue of humility examine on humility toward god examine on humility towards our neighbor examine on humility towards oneself and then moral doctrine how interesting that he starts out kind of discussing it um and sentiments interesting because you know in franciscan formation we really start out discussing sentimentality um, and that really 
wishy-washy, lovey-dovey version of St. Francis out in the fields singing to the birds kind of thing. And so we start out discussing kind of thoughts and sentiments on humility. And then we're looking at a practical exam and overall on humility and then towards God, because that's where we need to start. A lot of times we do try start working on ourselves and it doesn't really work because we need to start with God. So they're starting with God and then others and their self. We're putting ourselves last again. But I think it'll be easiest to deal with humility with ourselves if we start in that order. God, others, us. God, others, us. Right. Very lovely. Very lovely. I don't know that I caught that last time. Again, here's another quote from Ecclesiasticus, which you know was our very first Lexio Divina study. It was on Ecclesiasticus. This is in Ecclesiasticus 10. The beginning of the pride of man is to fall off from God because his heart is departed from him that made him. For pride is the beginning of all sin. He that holdeth it shall be filled with maledictions and it shall ruin him in the end. Ecclesiasticus, my friends, is also sometimes called the wisdom of Ben Sirach. You can see very wise. Thoughts and sentiments on humility. In paradise, there are many saints who never gave alms on earth. Their poverty justified them. Hmm. There are many saints who never mortified their bodies by fasting or wearing hair shirts. Their bodily infirmities excused them. There are many saints, too, who were not virgins. Their vocation was otherwise. But in paradise, there is no saint who is not humble. Wow, what a powerful paragraph. You could spend quite some time studying this, especially for, for Franciscans. This is a beautiful, beautiful passage to go into. God banished angels from heaven for their pride. Therefore, how can we pretend to enter therein if we do not keep ourselves in a state of humility? Without humility, says St. Peter, Damien, Sermon 45, not even the Virgin Mary herself, with her incomparable virginity, could have entered into the glory of Christ. And we ought to be convinced of this truth, that though destitute of some of the other virtues, we may yet be saved, but never without humility. There are people who flatter themselves that they have done much by preserving unsullied chastity. And truly, chastity is a beautiful adornment. But, as the angelic St. Thomas says, speaking absolutely, humility excels virginity. We often study diligently to guard against and to correct ourselves of the vices of concupiscence, which belong to a sensual and animal nature, and this inward conflict which the body wages adversar- adversus carnum against the flesh, Galatians 5, 17, is truly a spectacle worthy of God and his angels. But alas, how rarely do we use this diligence and caution to conquer spiritual vices, of which pride is the first and greatest of all, and which sufficed of itself to transform an angel into a demon. Did you ever think of that? Pride was enough to change an angel into a demon. Hmm. It's a little frightening, isn't it? There are footnotes. They are mainly in Latin, at least what I'm seeing. Can you see that? Uh, The page numbers are in the outside upper corners as well as the name of the book, and then the chapter title is over here. Not the chapter number, but the chapter title. It's very simple, easy to read. I think it would be best done in a a group study, where you do it by yourself, and then you get together. Hmm. Sorry, I kind of almost just want to sit here and contemplate this book. So I I really can't recommend it enough. Shall I read you a different section? Um, Let's just look at number 55 for no apparent reason. But above all, the thought of eternity should keep us humble, taking it for granted that I am mistaken in practicing humility in this world and in giving place to others. I know that my mistake is small because everything below comes quickly to an end. But if I am deceiving myself by living in reckless pride, my mistake is great because it will last for all eternity. But even if I am living in humility, I must still fear because I can never be sure whether this humility, which I think I possess, is true humility or not. How much more then should I fear if I am living in open pride? So be it, O my soul, satisfy all thy proud desires, be thou esteemed, praised, and honored by all the world. 
possess knowledge, riches, and pleasures without adversity, without opposition, without any obstacles to trouble thee or restrain thy vicious passions. And then, and then, I pray thee in this to imitate the proud Nebuchadnezzar, who even in the fullness of his power thought, what should come to pass hereafter? Daniel 2.29. All is vanity that hath an end, and we are doomed to enter into that eternity which hath no end. Therefore, what will be the end of vanity of thy of the vanity of thy pride, the most ignominious humiliations, and the most bitter lamentations, that will last forever and ever. On this side of the grave all things pass away, but on the other side, what will become of me? Quid futurum post hoc? What future will come after this? To this I give no thought, and to speak the truth, this is the reason why I am dominated by vanity, because I give so little thought to eternity. King David was most humble apart because he was filled with the dread of eternity. And I meditate in the night with my own heart. Will God then cast off forever? Psalm 76, 7 3. Whenever the world offers thee honors, fame, and pleasure, remember, my soul, to say within thyself, and then, and then, remember what things have been before thee. Mm, I think this is Ecclesiasticus 41 5. How many of those who were con- Conspicuous among the proud of this world have overcome their pride and acquired humility by one single serious thought of eternity. The words of the prophet have always been and always will be found true. And the ancient mountains were crushed to pieces. The hills of the world were bowed down by the journeys of his eternity. I believe this is Habakkuk 3, 6. 56. There is one kind of pride which is more abominable in the eyes of God than any other, And that is, says the Holy Writ, which belongs more especially to the poor. My soul hateth a poor man that is proud. Ecclesiasticus 25, 3-4. If the pride of one who is rich in merit, talents, and virtues, treasures most precious to the soul, is displeasing to God, still more displeasing to him will it be in one who has not these same motives for pride, but who, on the contrary, has every reason to be humble. And this, I fear, is the pride of which I am guilty." I am poor in soul, without virtue or merit, full of iniquity and malice. And yet I esteem myself and love my own esteem so much that I am troubled if others do not esteem me also. I am truly a poor, proud, miserable creature, and the greater my poverty, the more my pride is detestable in the eyes of God. All this proceeds from not knowing myself. Grant, O my God, that I may say with the prophet, I am the man that sees my poverty. Lamentations 3.1 Make known unto me, O Lord, mine own wretchedness, That of myself I am nothing, know nothing, and possess nothing but my sins, and deserve nothing but hell. I have received from thee many graces, lights, inspirations, and much help. And yet with what ingratitude have I responded to thine infinite goodness? Who is more sinful? Who is more ungrateful? Who is more wicked than I? The more thou hast done for me, the more humble I ought to be. For I shall have to render unto thee a most strict account of all thy benefits. And unto whomever, whomsoever much is given... Of him much shall be required. Luke 12, 48. And yet the greater thy goodness, the greater my pride. I blush with shame. And it is the knowledge of my pride that obliges me now to be humble. Ooh, friends. This is just in thoughts and sentiments on humility. But you can see he's setting us up to do those examines. To really look at ourselves. Look at how our relationship with God, our relationship with others... And then look at our relationship with ourselves, constantly turning, turning, turning to the Lord in every moment to remember our end, which is him. When we remember our eternity, it should be with him. It's either with him or without him. There's no other, there's no other end. This, this is staying out. This, this is going to be my next um, reading. You know, I'm getting ready for a summer camp with Father Boniface, Boniface Hicks. So I'm going through those books. I'm also reading over here. Um, my late reading is True Devotion to Mary as a follow-up to um, the total consecration that I just did. This is still tan books, but it's a different way of doing the total consecration. So I've been looking at this as well. And so Humility of Heart is totally speaks to everything that I'm doing this summer. So that's going to be my other fun reading. It's kind of nice because this is a pocket-sized one, as I say again. It's so much smaller. I think it will actually fit in my Maccabee skirt pocket. So this one I can carry around with me all day and read. 
Um, and it's numbered. So lovely. You can just read those little numbered paragraphs and stop there. I think that is going to definitely be in, in my summer reading, especially since it does fit in my pocket. I can take that everywhere. Mm. That's a powerful read, isn't it, friends? I hope that you dive in. Um, put your experiences with the book or your thoughts on it in the comments below. As always, God bless you if you watched this far. Like, share, and subscribe. And may God bless you and keep you. May make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.